24 says that God is spirit and those who worship him those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. That, of course, refers to being under the filling of God the Holy Spirit and in the divine dinosphere. Therefore, before we start our study tonight, let's take our normal few moments of silence, which, of course, is designed for the rebound technique to make sure that we are in the divine dinosphere and in a state of being able to study. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that once again, from your perfect faithfulness, you've recognized our every need and our capacities, and in fulfillment of the plan that you've provided for us, you've given us yet another opportunity to gather together as a local church to study your word. Then, as a result of its application, to develop capacity for life, for love, for happiness, for blessing, for service, and of course, the capacity to handle those problems and pressures that you know are in our immediate future. We ask now that God the Holy Spirit would provide for each of us self-discipline, concentration, genuine humility, and anything else we might need for a proper study. As always, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Doink. We are doing the Old Testament. <clears throat> Eventually, <laughs> right now we're doing, a, we're doing a warm up to the Old Testament. Ha ha. It's not. Oh, well, it just takes a while to catch up. Okay. So we, have the, we did the overview of the structure and the collection of the Old Testament. We saw the uh, various ways that it was put together, and eventually we saw all of the books associated with it. That led us then to the canonicity. How do we know that those books are the right books? Uh, and so we went through a study of canonicity and learned about canonicity and inspiration and the fact that uh, the books were already uh, the right books. We just had to identify them as humans. God knew exactly which books were going to be in the canon. Then we saw keys to studying the Old Testament, focused a little bit on the uh, literary keys, being able to understand poetry, being able to understand prose, being able to understand um, the uh, uh, allusions and analogies that are going to be used, and then also uh, understanding the theology. <clears throat> that led us then to point four, where we currently are, which is the Old Testament and, and the divisions of time. We saw the definition and description of time, the fact that time is a chunk of eternity taken out of eternity, the fact that we have ages, civilizations, and dispensations. And then we went in and saw <clears throat> the, the information about dispensations, the fact that dispensation is really about administration of God's plan during time and the fact that we need to understand dispensations because that administration is going to change and certain things such as spiritual gifts and the abilities of the believer are going to change. We saw that there were different methods of communication uh, and it's very, it's very important to understand the Bible, to understand as a road map where the different pieces of the Bible fit within dispensations. We saw <clears throat> the three ways, after talking about these three ways, we got a little bit more in-depth into these three ways. We did a review of the ages. We saw that there is the age of the Gentiles, the age of the Jews, the age of church, and the age of Christ. We saw <clears throat> a short review of these ages. We saw four different civilizations, and then the seven dispensations, and they're all put together in this map. And so we have at the top the civilizations. We have antediluvian, which means before the flood. And remember, the key to a civilization is the fact that it always starts with believers only, and it always ends with a, uh, with a, uh, a very uh, uh, cleansing catastrophe, if you will. And so the antediluvian ended with the flood. And then the one that we're currently in, which is the postdiluvian, meaning after the flood, the postdiluvian dispensation started, of course, after the flood with the uh, eight individuals that survived that. And it's going to go to the second advent of, of Christ and the baptism of fire. So the baptism of fire is the judgment that's going to happen. And it's going to take all unbelievers off of the face of the earth. Then we go into the millennium and we have the millennial dispensation. And of course the, the uh, judgment that takes place on that one is the great white throne judgment. And then we go into the eternal dispensation which of course has no end. Uh, then we went into the ages. We saw the ages, like I said, the Gentiles, the Jews, uh, the church, and Christ. And then we saw the breakdown there. And then we started into the dispensation. So far, we've gotten the dispensation of perfection. We've uh, gotten the dispensation, or excuse me, not dispensation of perfection. We, got, we have the, uh, yeah. Uh, and then the Gentile dispensation, the, Jew, the dispensation of the formation of the Jewish race. 
Let me see if I can get this guy to click. It's going to take its time. Okay. <clears throat> the dispensation of the formation of the Jewish race. Uh, and we saw that the, that dispensation goes from Abraham and Sarah. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, Abraham and Sarah. Um, rebound chart to uh, Moses and the Exodus, of course, and then and the fact that uh, it was broken up into two pieces. We have the Jewish race piece, and then, uh, uh, <clears throat> or no, excuse me, sorry. I got to quit. Free, free, free going here. Then we saw the fourth dispensation is the priest nation. That's actually where we're at right now. Uh, we saw that there's a 40 year overlap, <clears throat> there's 40 years of warning. And 40 years is enough to build the church. Uh, so the end of this the dispensation of the formation of the Jewish nation, or the priest nation Israel, uh, not the formation, the, the, of the priest nation Israel, uh, the end of it is uh, enough for the church to form up. We saw that it goes up to AD 70, uh, and the, where Israel is still a priest nation. Point five, Israel receives the third and fourth unconditional covenants. And last week I went back and gave a little bit more information regarding uh, those covenants, uh, the, specifically the Davidic covenant, which I had gone through very quickly. <clears throat> so I filled that in. Uh, God gives us the Mosaic law. Uh, so we saw that as point six. Point seven, we saw that uh, we have the formation of the Old Testament, the fact that now that there is a nation, a priest nation that can, do, that can protect it and uh, disseminate it, we then have the canon being written. We have the missionary change, the fact that uh, this changes from one man, which of course was Abraham before that, and Moses then we have, or Abraham and his family, uh, to a, a nation as the missionary outreach, the nation, priest nation Israel. <clears throat> and then we saw that salvation in this dispensation, as always, is through the personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in point 10 is actually where we are. Point 10 is the five cycles of discipline. We saw that also as a result of formation of and responsibility incurred by the priest nation during this dispensation, God provides and reveals a system of national discipline in specific excuse me, phases or cycles which grow more intense the longer the nation chooses to disregard or reject God's specific commands for proper national function. These cycles of discipline are located in Leviticus 26, 16 through 33, and are presented as five increasing phases. So point B said the first phase, or the first cycle, is presented in Leviticus 26, 16 through second, uh, 17. Then we have the second cycle given to us in Leviticus 26, 18 through 20. The third is in Leviticus 26, 21 through 22. The fourth is in verses 24 through 26. And the fifth is in verses 27 through 33. And that left us ready, I believe, to pick up with subpoint C. And that's actually where we are right now. So subpoint little c. So we're in 4, F, subpoint 10, subpoint little c. Little c says, as a result of national malfunction, or failure to fulfill, to fulfill their priest nation responsibilities, comma, Israel has undergone the fifth cycle of discipline three separate times, colon. Sub point one, one with two parents around it. <clears throat> the northern kingdom, comma, known as Israel or Ephraim, that's E-P-H-R-I-U-M, 
So the northern kingdom, known as Israel or Ephraim, comma, was taken out under the fifth cycle of discipline to Assyria, A-S-Y-R-I-A, pardon me? Yeah, A-S-S, I'm sorry, of yeah, <laughs> fat fingered it, yep, two S's, A-S-S-Y-R-I-A, thank you, miss. So it was taken out under the fifth cycle of discipline to Assyria in 721 B.C., Second Kings seventeen six. Now, one of the things we always have to remember when we think of the five cycles of discipline and the fact that it's progressively uh, uh, greater and greater discipline is the fact that all of this is brought about by the internal malfunction of the client nation or in Israel's case, the priest nation. So we are a client nation. We won't, we won't go out under the fifth cycle of discipline uh, in, in, in one cycle. Okay? The, in other words, what I'm saying is we won't get overrun by some uh, country that uh, God uses as his flail to take us out until we have first been completely rotted internally. So when you see the rot that's happening, when you see the things that are going on, you can compare those to the five cycles of discipline and get kind of a, a good idea of where we are. And we're close, okay? But we've been close for a while, and God has spared us, and so uh, he may spare us again. So I'm not trying to do doom and gloom, but what I'm saying is be aware that when, the, when, when God uses another uh, country to come in and wipe out the priest nation or the client nation, uh, it's already because it's an empty shell. They're just cleaning out the husk, <laughs> okay? Uh, I, I have these uh, uh, pomegranate, I have a pomegranate bush in our backyard, right? In the pomegranates, uh, every now and then we get these really weird uh, Japanese beetle things that if I don't spray with uh, hard enough chemicals, they'll come in. And they eat, they, they bore a little hole into the pomegranate and they eat the whole inside, right? And by the time it falls off the tree, it's just this empty husk, right? And it, and it falls off the tree, and then when I try to go get out underneath the tree and get it, it's easy to actually just crush it because it's empty, okay? Well, that's exactly what happens to a, a client nation. It's empty. There's nothing left inside that is worth anything to God, and so God says to another nation, fine, take them out. I'll form another one someplace else, okay? Now, the, the, the ones that uh, take over aren't always the ones that become the client nation. In some cases, they are. For example, when uh, Rome took out Israel in uh, 70 AD, Rome became a client nation. And we have the, uh, the, uh, the uh, good emperors that uh, resulted as a result of them accepting Christianity and the nation becoming a, a client nation. But that's not always the case. Okay? So Syria didn't become a client nation. So the northern kingdom, known as Israel, Ephraim, was taken out under the fifth cycle of discipline to Assyria in 721 BC, 2 Kings 17, 6. Subpoint 2, 2 with single parents, I mean 2 with double parents around it. The southern kingdom, comma, known as Judah, comma, that's J U D A H, So the southern kingdom, known as Judah, was taken out under the fifth cycle of discipline. To Babylon. By Nebuchadnezzar. And I'll spell that for you. 
So by, and it's N E B U C H A D N E Z Z A R. So it looks like Nebo Chad Nezer. And you guys should all remember this one, it's in 586 BC. They were held in captivity for 70 years. Second Kings 25, 1 through 11. And sub point three. This is three with double parents around it. The last priest nation, comma, Judea, J U D E A. So it's Judea as opposed to Judah. So Judea, comma, was taken out under the fifth cycle of discipline. by Rome in A.D. 70, comma, which ushered in the, quote, times of the Gentiles, period, end quote, which comes from Josephus, comma, the war of the Jews. And that's in quotes or underlined, however you want to quote a book. Okay? Come on, come back. Okay, so that happens... <clears throat> Priest Nation Israel, that happens here, okay? And it ends at Pentecost, and that's uh, AD 70, so that's where, that's where that ends, that, okay? Subpoint G. The fifth dispensation... is the dispensation of the church what is going on okay so we're going to be coming here into the dispensation of the church you can see where it starts here and where it goes okay so the fifth di this division is the dispensation of the church, comma, which runs from the day of Pentecost A.D. 30 to the rapture of the church Who can, we get, who can give me the date on that one? <laughs> Nobody. <right? laughs> Which runs from the day, yeah, it feels like this year, doesn't it? Sometime soon, <laughs> maybe, maybe New Year's or something. Which runs from the day of Pentecost, AD 30, to the rapture of the church, comma, which is imminent, I-M-M-I-N-E-N-T, but totally unknown, as far as date
or even generation is concerned. So, so we have all these dates going up here and then eh, no more. <laughs> right? we, some, sometime, someday, there will be a rapture. Okay? We don't know when, so we don't know how long this is going. Maybe 20,000 years, maybe 2,030 years or 2,050 years. Who knows? Okay. So, uh, which is imminent but totally unknown as far as date or even generation is concerned. Matthew 2436, comma. Mark 1332. Acts 1 7, semicolon. All three of these passages refer to the second advent but if we knew the exact time of the second advent Two A is always a good abbreviation for Second Advent. We could deduce the exact time of the rapture. If we could figure out the exact time of the rapture, or the exact time of the second advent that would make God a liar and Satan would win the angelic conflict period So the idea is nobody's going to be able to figure out the day or the time. Uh, that's exactly what the Bible tells us. And if they say that they can, then they're lying. <clears throat> okay? And we haven't had uh, uh, very many episodes in the most recent years, but many of you may recall where we had a whole group of people that uh, killed themselves uh, waiting for the, uh, you know, waiting for a, uh, a rapture-like event to happen behind some comet that you know God was going to come and pick them up and the rapture was going to occur right you know and so you have these individuals that think they're going to be able to figure it out and or, or someone uh, suckers them into telling them exactly when it is and of course if God's going to pick you up and take you in the rapture you don't need any personal property so you just give it to me for safekeeping <laughs> and when you're gone you know I'll make sure that it gets taken care of right <clears throat> uh, we watched we watched on uh, uh, Netflix or Amazon or Prime or something. The other day, we watched one of the uh, Star Trek movies, and it was uh, one of the, the least popular ones, but it was one where they go out past the edge of the universe, supposedly, to uh, meet God. Okay, uh, Spock's half-brother uh, takes them out to the edge of the universe to meet God, and uh, God decides he wants their spaceship, right? And, and, uh, and Spock's brother, who's the opposite of Spock, he's all emotional, right? He's like, ooh, you know, and, and uh, they're all about ready to give him a spaceship, except for, of course, good old Captain Kirk. He's a smart guy, right? And he goes, uh, excuse me, why does God need a spaceship? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. And uh, yeah, that's the whole point. That God is uh, being wasn't of God, of course, right? You know. Well, that's when you have these individuals. I tell you about the rapture, right? You know, they're they're trying to play God, but they're not God. Okay. Sub sub point one. <laughs> the dispensation of the church. is a parenthetical insertion, comma, that's why it's displayed that way on the chart, and it's surrounded by parents, 
is a parenthetical dis insertion, comma, or intercalation, comma. That's I-N-T-E-R-C-A-L-A-T-I-O-N. And calation is talking about calendars, talking about dates. So an intercalation is uh, something that's inserted in the middle of, uh, of a uh, uh, time frame that's on a calendar. Uh, for example, February 29th, every four years, is an intercalation. Uh, it's not normal for the calendar to have a 29th of February, uh, except it is every four years for us, but that's intercalation. Okay? So the dispensation of the church is a parenthetical insertion or intercalation inserted into the age of Israel seven years before its completion or the second advent. <clears throat> Remember the age of Israel ends at the second advent. In other words, comma, the time clock for the age of Israel is stopped with seven years remaining, comma, and the church age which is synonymous with the dispensation of the church, comma, is inserted, period. The time clock for the age of Israel will start again with seven years to run after the rapture of the church is completed. See if I can go back to the chart here. The internet connection, because we're running the, the web, is kind of slow. So I hope I'm not messing up the, uh, the connection on the, on the web. But, so what we see here, see, as the church is, is in parents here, so we have the age <clears throat> of the Jew, okay, uh, being, coming to here, uh, and then, boop, it, we got the church age in here, and then there's a second part that's still seven years. The second part starts at the rapture, and it ends at the second advent, okay? So we still have seven years to go here. And I'm going to give you all the documentation for that in this next point. Subpoint two. We know from the book of Daniel that the post captivity period. of the age of Israel or the Jewish age is 490 years comma or quote 70 weeks of years comma quote from Daniel 9 
24. So these are weeks of years. They're not just weeks. Okay, so we have it's another one of those that when we, you know, when we talk about interpreting the Old Testament correctly, Daniel 9:24 says, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for inequity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. And it's not 70 weeks, it's 70 weeks of years. So it's 490 years. Continue the point. This 70 weeks of years is to start from the, excuse me, is to start from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem comma, which had been destroyed in 586 BC, comma, So these, this 70 weeks of years is to start from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem that was destroyed in 586 B.C. and is given in Daniel 9.25. So I read you 9.24. 9.25 says, So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. So seven weeks plus 62 weeks is 69 weeks. Okay? <clears throat> so here we have uh, the 70 weeks is started to, start, to start from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. That was destroyed in 586 B.C., it was given to Daniel, or given in Daniel 9:25, which was given to Nehemiah, and this is the uh, decree is actually given to Nehemiah So yeah, which was given to Nehemiah, Nehemiah spelled N-E-H-E, M-I-A-H, in the 20th year. of King Artaxerxes, it's A-R-T-A-X-E-R-X-E-S, Artaxerxes Longimanus, L-O-N-G-I-M-A-N-U-S. <clears throat> -E so which was given to Nehemiah in the 20th year, so the, the, uh, the uh, a decree was given to Nehemiah in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes Longimanus, comma, the Persian ruler, period. So Artaxerxes was a Persian ruler. Nehemiah 2, 1 through 8. Period. The twentieth year of King Artaxerxes equates to four fifty three BC. So point C. <clears throat> we also know subpoint three. What did I say? Oh, three, I'm sorry. Subpoint three. 
Wow, that was weird. I'm looking at it. I don't know where C even came from. Okay, sub point three. Yep, we're in four G three. Okay. We it says we also know from Daniel nine twenty five through twenty six. So I read you 25, let me give you 26 too. 25 says, so you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree, that's the one that was given to Nehemiah, to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, that's obviously the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built upon again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then 26 says, then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing and the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war, desolations, and, <clears throat> excuse me, desolations are determined. Okay. So, we know from Daniel 25, or 9, 25 through 26, that after 69 weeks, or 483 years, So 69 times 7 is 483. Okay, so we know that after 69 weeks or 483 years, the Messiah will be cut off, comma, which refers to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, And the end of the first advent. By adding 483 years, to 453 B.C. So remember, so getting all these numbers straight, 453 B.C. was the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, which is when the, uh, which is when the uh, proclamation came down to uh, reestablish. <clears throat> and so you have, you know, four, uh, 453 B.C. and B.C., remember, uh, counts backwards, so that's why I made it a negative number. So when you add the 483 years, which is the 69 weeks, okay, to 453 B.C., you end up with, guess what, 30 years, or 30 A.D., essentially, the date of the crucifixion. So what we have is, by adding 483 years to 453 B.C., we get A.D. 30, comma, <clears throat> which is the historical date of the crucifixion. And also, the start of the church age, period. The age of Israel still has, quote, one week of years, end quote, comma, end quote, or seven years to run, comma, which is the dispensation of the tribulation, period.
What's interesting is people that don't believe in any of the dispensations uh, don't understand any of this math. They don't get how fantastic the Bible is and how fantastic God's plan has been revealed to us. I mean, it all adds up. Right, and they say, well, you're just interpreting that. No, we're reading it the way it's supposed to be read, right? It's, it's an actual given fact. Okay, so the idea is that uh, uh, it's clear that we have these dispensations. We have these things that have to happen. We know that we have Daniel's seven weeks, seven weeks is seven years, right? And uh, they've only done six of them. They still have one more week of years or seven years left to do. And, of course, we know it's going to be a shortened seven years because the tribulation is not going to be able to last as long as seven years or there would be no mankind left after it was over. It's that bad. So if you ever think, you know, this is really bad, just think about those people that have to live through the tribulation and go, Whew. <laughs> we're not there. We're going to be gone. We're going to be gone in the rapture, right? <clears throat> okay. Sub point four, not D or M or... <laughs> Sub point four, four with single parents around it. The church age is the quote mystery age, end quote. Which means that the church age is not revealed in the Old Testament or previous dispensations, period. The Old Testament reveals the entire Jewish age including the birth death resurrection Ascension and session of the Lord Jesus Christ, comma, the tribulation, comma, got to talk about the tribulation, it's the, seven, it's the 70th week, the tribulation, comma, the baptism of fire, comma, talks about the end of the tribulation, the second advent, here's a kicker, and the millennium, comma, <coughs> but never mentions the church or, quote, mystery age, period, end quote. Romans 16, 25 through 26, Colossians 1, 6. That's where, we, where we're told that it's a mysterion information, mystery, mystery information. We know that it talks about the millennium because remember I gave you the two, uh, the two uh, covenants that are only going to be available to the Jewish nation during the millennium when they have the new heavens and the new earth. The Palestinian one uh, primarily associated with the land grant that they're not going to receive until the millennium. So we know it has the millennium. It obviously has to have the tribulation. That's the 70th week. And then it has everything in between. So, <laughs> we, have, so we have all of that being brought out in the Old Testament, but it is moot mute on the, uh, the uh, church age. And so those individuals that try to go through the uh, Old Testament and find the church and all kinds of passages and all kinds of things that the Old Testament is saying are ding-dongs, okay? Because it's not there. Uh, the the uh, Christ and, and allusions to Christ as the, uh, as the Messiah is, of course, all there. 
but the church itself and the formation of the church and anything dealing with the church and the gifts that the church are going to have and the, the change in, in uh, administration and the, uh, the uh, uh, idea of priests and uh, believers being priests as well as ambassadors. All of that stuff is absent from the Old Testament. And when people try to find that, you, you, there's always somebody, it seems like, publishing a book. I have all kinds of uh, books that I, uh, uh, well, I get a catalog now about, should have been, it used to be every month, it seems like it's every week now, from Christian Bookstore. They had to change their, their, their name. Uh, they used to be uh, the Christian Book uh, Distribution, which was CBD, and, and uh, uh, they were getting hit too many times by people looking for CBD, <laughs> so they changed their name. Any, anyway, uh, the idea is, in, this ca in that catalog, it has all kinds of books. If you, have, if you say you're Christian and you publish a book, it's probably in there, right? So it has books by women written for women for how to do uh, you know, their prayers and all kinds of stuff like that, but there's always books in there talking about finding Christ in the Old Testament. Okay, you can do that. That, or finding the church in the Old Testament. Eh, can't do that. Okay, and so that's one of the things we have to remember as we go through our review of the Old Testament is not look so hard for the church because it ain't there. Okay? So that's the point here. Uh, Colossians 1, 26. Sub point 5. Throughout the Old Testament... There are many places where the church age could have been prophesied but was passed over, period. See, so another fantastic, stop for a second and think about this. <laughs> another one of the fantastic things in the plan of God is that God knew, you know, that Satan could read. Wow, what a concept, right? And Satan would be able to read the Bible. Satan would be able to uh, understand the Bible, uh, the scriptures. And at that time, of course, it was the Old, it was the Old Testament because Satan is not uh, a, a, an eternal being from the standpoint that he doesn't operate. He's not imminent and transcendent like God is. Satan operates in time. Satan is a creature. Satan, there was a creation of Satan. Okay, and Satan will be everlasting, but he was created, and he runs in time. Satan cannot escape time. He's not like God that can be outside of time. Satan was not part of the divine decree, uh, the creation of the divine decree back in eternity. What we say is eternity past, but it was actually before time began. Satan, Satan came into existence during time. Remember when we talk about the, uh, uh, the Curly used to call it the Guam chart. And it's the order of events. And if you know how to spell Guam, it's G-U-A-M. And the idea was God was first. There was nothing else but God at one point. Okay? But there wasn't even a point. That's, that's the part for our minds that are hard to accept, right? <laughs> so, some, some time, which we can't call time, uh, you know, at some point, which wasn't a point, <laughs> okay, God existed. <laughs> okay? And then God created the universe. God created the universe as an environment for angels. So that's the G-U-A part of Guam. So he created the universe. The universe had a beginning. In the beginning, <laughs> Genesis 1-1, in an unspecified point of time in the beginning, <laughs> okay, God created the heavens and the earth. So he created the universe. Then he created angels. Well, Satan is an angel. So Satan is created in time. Okay? So Satan's operating in time. He can't go ahead in time. He can't look ahead. So he couldn't, uh, you know, he couldn't go forward. He only got the scriptures as it was being written by Moses. Or hearing it as it was being spoken through the previous dispensations. Okay? So he gets that. And he gets that information. Right? And he thinks, ah, I've got, you know, I've got a plan. I've got to figure this out. I've got to keep uh, the Messiah from coming. 
All I got to do is keep the Messiah from coming. So we have Gen the Genesis 6 episode where he tries to, uh, tries to corrupt all mankind so that there wouldn't be any, any uh, uh, seed left in the woman that would be totally human. And therefore you couldn't have the Messiah. Okay, that, that didn't work. Right? We had the flood. Oh, darn. Then Satan decides, okay, he's got to do some other stuff. Right? But the whole idea is God's keeping a trump card. <laughs> God, God's got a card up his sleeve. He could have given information about the church age in these passages, in which case Satan would know about it then. But it came as a surprise to Satan. See? Another one of those where God's saying, look, buddy, I'm smarter than you. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm stronger than you. <laughs> you know? I, I'm better than you. And you just give it up, right? Satan's not going to give it up. He's going to keep going all the way to the end. We know that because we believe in the Bible and we believe we understand what's happening at the end. But the idea is this is mysterious. This is mysterion. This is mystery doctrine. And therefore, even Satan didn't know about it. There were places where God could have put it and made it knowledgeable. I mean, made it, made it uh, available to Satan. And Satan would then have uh, 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 had an opportunity to uh, figure out what to do during the church age. Right now, he's having to wing it, right? <clears throat> so we have there, throughout the Old Testament, there are many places where the church age could have been prophesied, but was passed over. For example, comma, in Daniel chapter 8, between verses 22 and 23. And what we have here, it's a semicolon, put a semicolon there. What we have here says, and in the latter period of their rule, when the transgressors have run their course, a king will arise insolent and skilled in intrigue and his power will be mighty, but not his own power. And he will destroy to an extraordinary degree and prosper and perform. Excuse me, I went to the wrong, wrong verses. 22, 23 says, and the broken horn, sorry. I read, and the broken, 22 says, and the broken horn and the four horns. Now this is where uh, Daniel is getting a, a vision of a goat, right? And he's, and he's uh, 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 relating the vision of the goat, okay? It says, and the broken horn and the four horns that arose in its place represent four kingdoms which will arise from his nation, although not with his power. And in the latter period of their rule, when the transgressors have run their course. So between 22, when you have the four kingdoms, okay, uh, that's, that's the end of... That's the end of the 69th week, okay. And then, the, and then it says, and in the latter period of their rule, when the transgressors have run their course, that's where uh, the, the tribulation starts. It's hard to understand that, but that's exactly what it's telling us. It's a little bit clearer in the next one. Daniel chapter, so we had, uh, for example, Daniel chapter 8 between verses 22 and 23. Daniel chapter 9 between verses 26 and 27. Semicolon. In Daniel chapter 9, verses uh, 26 and 27 are the ones that we were reading. We read 26, but it says, Then after the, 26 starts off, Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. Okay. Then 27 says, And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice. So it says, for the many, for one week. That's the beginning of the tribulation. That's the last week. That's the 69th week. So the church is in between there. Okay, in between when it's destroyed, when the, when the uh, prince is, is destroyed, that's the crucifixion, right? And the temple is destroyed, is what it's talking about here. The city will destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's the 70 A.D., <laughs> okay? <clears throat> And then we have, and he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. That's the, that's the tribulation. So in between there is the church. He could have done that. Okay. Then we have Isaiah 60. Verse 1. 
And I'm going to give you verse 1 and 2. So you might as well say Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Comma. So we had, for example, Daniel chapter 8 between verses 22 and 23, semicolon. Daniel chapter 9 between verses 26 and 27, semicolon. Isaiah 60, verse 1, comma. The first half of the verse... deals with the first advent and the second half of the verse deals with the second advent period Then verse 2 clarifies what happens between the two halves of verse 1. which is the tribulation. Okay? So verse, uh, chapter 60, verse 1. First half, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Your light has come is the Messiah, represented as a light, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's coming, right? And so that's the first advent. The second half says, And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Upon you. That, that's a, that the, the Hebrew there is talking about on the earth, a touchdown. Okay, that's the second advent. Now, if you just read that, that's the problem with some of the poetry and everything in here. Is, is, uh, it seems like you're stretching it. Uh, you're not. Uh, but you have to understand what it's saying. So rise, shine, for your light has come, first advent, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That's the second advent. But verse 2 tells you just to make sure. It says, for behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. That's what happens after verse 1, after the first advent. Okay? Uh, when, you, when you look at it from a Jewish period, you don't have the church. You have the first advent, the Messiah dies, and then what do you have? You go into the tribulation. So for behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. So that's how you, the, the, it uses the same word, the upon you and upon you, and that's how you know in verse 1 that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you is talking about the second advent. Okay? So you have the first advent, you have the second advent, given in parts A and B of verse 1, and then verse 2 is telling you that in between there you have darkness and everything else before you have the second advent. And at that point in, in time, I mean at that point in that verse, okay, God could have talked about what actually happens in between there, which also happens to be the church age. Because obviously between the first advent and the rapture, you have the church age. And then you have the rapture, and then you have the seven years, and then you have the, the second advent. Okay? Remember, the rapture is not an advent. An advent's only when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ touches ground. Okay? That's why we go up to, the, to meet the Lord in the air at the rapture. If he had come down to pick us up and uh, touch the ground, then you would have, a, uh, then you would have an advent. Okay? <clears throat> That's why it was important, for example, that the, the, the first advent didn't end until the Lord had gone down in, done his victorious proclamation, came back out, okay, and then ascended. See, if he had, if he had gone up first and then come back down to get the uh, captivity captive, that would have been the second time that he was on earth. That would have been the second advent. And then we'd have been all kinds of confusion because you already have people that are confused between the second coming of Christ and the second advent and, and, the, tribu I mean, and the rapture. They, it gets all mixed up, right? But the idea is advent means to touch, okay? So... With all of that, hopefully not too confusing, but with all of that for you to ponder on until next week, that's where we're going to stop. We're going to pick it up <clears throat> with uh, verse 6.
I mean point six, uh, beginning next Wednesday. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to study, to be able to advance in ranks, to be able to get a better understanding of the Old Testament, and more importantly right now as we're reviewing dispensations to get a very good understanding of dispensations, when they start, when they stop, and the importance of the, uh, the uh, uh, ad authority and administration in those uh, dispensations, and to be able to figure out and understand how that will give us a better understanding and handle as we get ready to study the Old Testament. We ask now that God the Holy Spirit would take all of this information that we're learning, Help us cycle it through our souls, put it into our frame of reference, and be able to use it as we continue this study. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen.